Hello, novice reef keepers, how are you today? A lot of people have been asking, uh, how do you calibrate the smart tester? How do you change the reagents? How do you flush the lines? How to, how to, how to. So today in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly what I know, which isn't much, but um, I've had the unit for a lot longer now. And um, I do know how to calibrate, I do know how to change the reagent, and I do know how to fix some problems. So I'll let you know what I know, just to help you out. So guys, as you know, oh, I is doing a test right now. I have had the unit now for, oh, maybe a couple months. You did see my original video on it. So at the moment, I do have the magnesium testing. As you can see, the unit is testing. I was using the phosphate reagent, but I did decide to do the MG. So I will show you now in the app uh, my test results and a little bit about that. Right guys, so we're just here to look at the magnesium results that I've been getting over um, a period of time. I must say I was a little bit disappointed with the amount of tests um, we did get out of the um, magnesium test. It is, I think it's 25 tests. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. So um, if you're testing twice a day, it's like two weeks um, and they're not that cheap. Um, I'll just show you here. I did get a consistent result though. You can see here I got 14.89. That was before the lights were on. I think sometimes pH does play a part in um, magnesium testing. But you can see 1521, 1528, 1501, 1509, 1506, 1506, 1521, 1525, 1509. That's very, very consistent to my results um, that I normally do with titration. Titration normally get 1500 and then it kind of changes the last drop. Um, a good thing about this is normal titration and other automatic testers only test up to 1500, 1600. This unit, you'll see when I had all the errors, could test up to 3,000. So that's good. I don't know who would have a magnesium of 3,000, but if you do, you'll find out about it. So I did get a lot of problems at the start, and that was with me not clicking down those reagent pads properly. The spinning, the little pill inside the unit couldn't spin. Therefore, I wasn't getting a good guess spread of reagent through the mix um the next problem i had was can't add reagent three this was a little bit frustrating this was a tip problem but honestly the support was so good you can click show more it opens up straight away and you can find your error and all the common issues with it so that was really really great and i commend reef factory for adding that to their website so yeah guys, so at the start I was not happy with the magnesium, um, but as most problems that I have found with the unit, it was me, it was user error. So these pop out and they slide in and out pretty much. Now if you just have it just sit in there, you can't see it, there's a little bit of a lip and these just kind of sit and the, they've got little pills inside here, inside the reagents, and if that can't spin, it can't, I guess the reagent splits so what you gotta do is you gotta push this back and then it clicks in and they don't move and then it tested perfect and I got those results so I want to go back now to the phosphate testing because that's originally why I got the unit so I'm gonna go put the phosphate back on I'm gonna show you how to change the reagents and how I do that and then in another video I'll show you how to calibrate all right and to change the reagent you will need your new or used reagent tubs and a vial of RO water. It does come with the container but you will have to fill that up. To fill that up you take off the top here and there's a little hole in there that you just fill up. Alright guys so we've got the unit just here. The first thing you want to do is you want to open up your Smart Reef app. When the Smart Reef app opens up you want to go to settings, measurement, oops sorry no settings, schedule I just want to remove the schedule so it doesn't just so it doesn't do any testing uh, while you're doing this next part the next thing you want to do is you want to change the cartridge so what we want to do is we want to go to new cartridge here and we want to follow the steps okay so it says the process of installing a new set of reagents will take up to 30 minutes need a new set pure RO Connect the silicon tubes of aquarium in and out and use connection water. 
out in the smart tester as you would for your normal use then press start what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove uh, my reagents now Let's see and I'm going to put the caps back on and put them to the side What it's doing now is emptying the lines. Now, some people like to keep the cartridge on here and what it will do is it will put reagent back in. That's probably the smart way they're removing them right now. Um, but I've just gone ahead and removed them. I don't think it matters too much either way. I mean, if, if reagent does come out, it's just wasting it, but. All right guys, so I don't know if you heard that, but the cool thing about this unit is when it's ready, you can walk away, it will beep, and it told me, so I came back. The next bit is disconnect and remove all the cartridges, which we've already done. Um, disconnect and remove all the cartridges from the smart tester, and attach pump A silicon tube. So this is A, B, and C, so one, two, and three, left to right, to the RO cartridge. So I've already gone ahead and filled up this with RO water. To do that is you just pull this off and you can stick your RO line in there or syringe and fill that up. Um, I don't know if you meant to take these off, but I have been. I feel like it lets water pass through a bit more. So what you want to do is you want to get your silicon line. You want to then slide this in and you'll see there's a little bit of a click. Click. So now it's in place and you want to click next. So effectively this is going to now take two minutes says it's now flushing the line so it's drawing RO water into the line into the pump and then back and squirting into the little there's a little beaker in here and it's cleaning out the reagent from the magnesium so it's a nice clean line so what it will do I think is it will push water through it will then empty itself and then we'll put them on onto two and three flush all the lines all right guys it's now finished a so it now wants us to put on silicon tube B. One thing I do say about this unit is it's cool because it's nice and small but getting into all these it's a very tight fit and they do give you a handy little tool. I'll click this next. I'll show you the tool that they give you. So it's now flushing B. So they give you this little 3D printed tool here and that's to help you get in and to to unclick things but oh my god it is very tight and I'd say that's a pro and a negative pro it's small looks nice um, that's what people don't want these big units but yeah it is a very tight fit okay so we had the beep it is now saying remove B and put on C now the reagent for phosphate doesn't use it only uses two so three but I think you should clean it out because the reagent crystallizes and then it's going to block up the pipe next time you want to use it so we're now flushing three. Okay, so it has beeps so and now we're up to already up to step six from nine so we now remove the cartridge here you want to put the little knob back in just to protect it from any contaminants. It says disconnect silicon lines from pump C, which it has cartridge with the RO. Remove the RO cartridge from the smart tester. Do not install new cartridge yet. So we're leaving it just like that and we're clicking next. Okay, so as you can just see on the screen, I hope here, it says we can now install the new reagents. And then what we want to do is scan the barcode on the back of the reagents just there so let's just scan them just like that you then want to choose to rinse the measuring curvette or to just drain it now um, they suggest you to rinse it but you can just drain it they suggest to rinse it I'm, I just rinse it so let's put these back on so we get react put this back on here make sure we slide it up and then push it down and make sure they're in three number 
three, which we won't be using. Can now click back onto its. There's like a nipple on the back of the wall, just to hold that. And then now, reagent two goes in to its little thing and took into its slot. See, that wasn't going into the slot. Maybe it didn't need to be forced. Um, so they're all in now. We have scanned everything that's ready to go. So we're just gonna click rinse. It is now gonna rinse everything. It's gonna take water from the aquarium and it's going to rinse the beaker. Make sure it's got no reagent in there. It's gonna bleed the lines of the reagent ready for a test. And then guys, it will be ready to go. guys so that's all done easy peasy just like that just follow the steps um, the good thing about the unit is um, it's relatively easy fast to change the reagents it took about 30 minutes to change it but you don't really have to do much it beeps in between steps when you have to do it you could leave one reagent on for one week let it run for a week and then do another one for a week um, and save a lot of money than getting like a Mastertronic or something like that I really suggest you buy one of these units um, so that's it guys, I hope that helped. See you next time.